Welcome, welcome to NG Fishing. Today I'm on Panarf Pier doing a spot of sea fishing. Um, I've currently put out two rods just with small hooks, flappers, a uh, little bit of ragworm. Basically, just trying to see what's about. Um, there could still be a couple of cod in or cod around, maybe. Maybe they are flat and you'll just have to see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, um, if I get anything, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let you know. And I'll talk you through some rigs, um, how I tie them. Um, so yeah. Panarf Pier is situated just outside Cardiff. As you can see in the distance, you can see the industrial side to Cardiff um, and and the barrage, which is the entrance into Cardiff Bay. This is fantastic in the summer for bass. Um, as the small coarse fish that have been swept down by the rivers and stuff into the taff sometimes get pushed through um, and you just see the bass smashing them. If you look closely there, looks like we got a fish on. So we definitely had a little nibble at that worm then. Let's just let the bite progress. When you're fishing on the pier, you don't need to be smacking into your bite straight away. Let it progress, especially if you've got a flapper rig out like I've got on there. You know, one fish could be two fish. So we'll let that progress and we'll, uh, we'll see if we've got anything on there shortly. So it's definitely having a little knock at that bit of ragworm. On a pier, the only time you'd ever strike 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 on the pier is if you get a full-on slack liner. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Nice, small little codling, uh, well undersized. So I'm just going to slip the hook back and slip him back in as quick as possible. With these guys, catching codling like this off a of pier, this is the future of our sport. What I would do is grip lead under the gill, drop him down, um, do it quickly, um, rather than throwing them in because otherwise they're just going to die. Right, I'm going to get the scorcher out get this fish back in the water. So to make a, f a flapper rig, you're going to need some shock leader. This is clear 50 pound shock leader, um, which is fine when you're fishing off a pier because you're not distance casting, you know, when you're fishing off a pier, you're not, you're not going to be fishing far out. <coughs> so you're not going to be using massive heavy leads, putting plenty of power into the card. So a 50 pound is great. Fishing off the beach and using a 5, 5 ounce. 50 pound would be fine. I tend to use 60 off the beach. Um, but in this demonstration, I'm going to use this 50 pound, um, which is the ten, tend to be the stuff I would use off the pier. I've got here some 25 pound Memorex from Ultima. Uh, this is a really nice line. This is this would be um, to tie our snoods. It's got uh, no memory, and people might think 50. You know, if you're into just into sea fishing. Or recently into sea fishing, you might feel twenty-five pound when you're not going to be catching massive fish. Really, uh, it's a bit much. But what you'll find is it helps just kick off, as well as um, when you're fishing. You know the beaches and, and piers and stuff, like you saw in the video with a pier. You could be hauling a fish up quite a way, so you want something that's going to going to have a bit of strength to it, as well as cope with the terrain. Um, in the video when I'm fishing on Panarf Pier. The, the ground's quite rocky, quite hard. So you want something that's going to gonna be robust. Um, also, you're going to need some hooks. Now, the hooks that I've been using are, are these hooks. They are 
eagle claw hooks in a in a one o. You know, there's so many hooks out there. It's an Ab Aberdeen pattern, and uh, there's loads of hooks out there. The Camazon hooks are very good, um, but I've started using these basically because they're cheaper. Um, I haven't lost I haven't lost fish on them yet, so that's good. You really need a pair of pliers, just a small pair of pliers. Now, for those of you who have seen any of my other videos, you would have seen a little box like this of goodies for my carp fishing. Now, I've always also got one for sea fishing. Um, in there, I've got lead clip. Uh, well, the kind of like a lead clip is a, is a, a, a link, really. Um, I've got two different sizes of swivel. Oh, that's quite important, uh, f depending on the rigs you're tying. But we'll, uh, I'll go through them another time uh, when I tie a pulley panel. I've got a selection of beads. In this one I've got some crimps. I'm ro quite running, running low on crimps, but we've got some crimps. Now these beads, they glow in the dark and they're, f they're floating beads or like pop-up beads. Um, they work really well for fishing ragworm for bass and things like that, where you want when your bait just suspended in the middle of the water. Some, some small sequins and some large sequins. Um, you can get the small ones in the tackle shop. I bought the large ones from a craft store. Well, from hob, from hobby, hobby, hobby craft. What I find is sometimes when I'm fishing for flatties in particular, having the disc with the hole is right on the edge. It spins around in the water and the flatfish really love it. Also, what I recommend you guys get is some of these. Uh, this, these, are, these are from Tronics. These, but all, most of the fishing manufacturers now make them. It's just a foam ring. Um, they've actually recently come into course fishing as well. I know Guru have come out with, with a box with these in for, for your kind of zig rigs or, or long traces. Box of these, you can, you can buy boxes, you can buy them in a pack. Um, they're not, they're about 40 pence each. They're not a lot of money. So that's the stuff you're going to need. Um, so let's get ready to make our flapper rig. Okay, so I've got my 50 pound shock leader. I'm just going to take... I take about, fishing off the pier, about a metre. So sort of from one side of your chest, a whipped right the way to the other side of your arm. I'll just chop that off. So we've got we've got our our shock leader now, which is the base for the flapper rig. Now, going into my magic box of goodies, I'm going to take out a lead. It's a lead clip link, like so. Let me like so. Now, some people don't like to use these with the with the angle coming down as sometimes the snood may get caught on it I've not had an issue um, so it's up to you guys you can use a swivel with a clip this is just there to clip your lead on you know it's not it's not important what it is just make sure it's strong enough now I use a grinner knot I'm a big fan of the grinner so I use a grinner knot and when you're using something like 50 pound shock leader you know sort of five turns is plenty put it back through make sure you moist it guys otherwise it's just gonna just gonna burn so moist it and push it down now it's quite a big tag end left on there as you might as you should you may be able to see and what I tend to do is I will trim it but I don't trim it as close as I do for my course fishing and I'll explain why is with the sea fishing there you know to everything there is more force now you know unless you hit a ray you're not going to get a run intake like you would a carp in a lake so it's not it's not from the fish it's from the casting from the environment in which you're fishing so I tend to leave the tag end slightly longer that allows just in case the knot slips um, it doesn't happen very often but it can happen so now I've got the I've got my clips on what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some crimps so we need two crimps per hook per hook snood 
So I've got six crimps out. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to do a pattern. And the pattern is, oh, I need, I need three swivels using the smaller swivels that I, I have. I find the smaller swivels are better on the, on the, on the snoods uh, for attaching the snoods to. So we go crimp on first. Now if you're struggling to get your crimps on, just take your scissors, cut your shock leader off at an angle rather than straight so it's got a point and you'll find that you know keep just twisting it if it's getting stuck and it will go it will go through so I've added the crimp then I'm going to add a bead now as you saw in my box we've got a selection of all different coloured beads you know if you want it to look all fancy then you can keep using just the same colour beads for me it doesn't make a difference really uh, if I put red beads on or yellow beads on you know they're the beads are there just to kind of help keep the swivel in place. So we've gone crimp, bead, swivel, bead. And then we follow that with a crimp. And that's the bottom one complete. So if you look there, you've got the pattern. Crimp, bead, swivel, bead, crimp. And we do the same again. We start off with a crimp. follow it up with a bead we then add a swivel followed by another bead followed by a crimp that's your second that's your second one done okay so we've got two sets two sets there already done last one which is crimp so again, so it's crimp first, followed by a bead, followed by a swivel, followed by a bead, followed by a crimp, and then now we've got all three ready and raring to go. So that's how you do that part. We're gonna take a swivel in a sec. Take a swivel in a second and tie it on the end. So we've got those our snoods on there, our snood ends on there. I'm taking. I'm gonna take take one off because I'm just gonna do a two hook. What I find is off the pier. I, I'm I'm a big fan of the two hook flapper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going back into my box of goodies and taking a big swivel out. This is a hundred pound swivel. So it's a very, very strong swivel. This swivel, you know, it's got to take the weight of any cast, any lifting of fish. And for that, I also do a grinner. Do a grinner. Put it down. Pull it right down as tight as you can. Make sure it's not going to slip. And then trim it again. But like I said, I, I, I do let it have a good tail. So that's the base. Of, that's the basics. The base of the of the flapper done. Now it's down to the snoods. So we'll put that to one side. I'm going to take my Memo X. I'm going to cut about 18 inches off. Okay, and then I'm going to take a hook. Like I said. I'm using the Eagle Claw hooks in the Aberdeen style. So the Aberdeen is a fantastic worm hook. So it's straight body with a small curve. Um, perfect, perfect for fishing worm. Um, you know, you could see some of these circular hooks, things like that. For worm fishing, really, Aberdeen is the best. And when you're fishing a flapper, you either want to be fishing worm baits round, round, round in my area in Wales. Or, you know, the right time of year, even strips of mackerel are fantastic for whiting. So, I've just done a grinner on that as well. We just pull that down, nice and tight, keep it wet. Now, as you can see, you've still got a tail there. Now, with the tag end on here, I'll make it slightly shorter, but not as tight as I would for coarse fishing. Like so. 
Okay, that then allows when I thread the worm up, the worm gets stuck on this as well as the eye. So it's less likely to blow up and blow down the line. Now, what I add to the snood is I add small sequin. Now, you know, if I was, if this, if this rig was for open sea fishing off the beach, you know, a nice sandy beach for flatties, then I would be using one of my larger sequins. But because this is off the pier, I'm not, and I'll explain why. The idea of this small sequin, yes, it's a little bit of glare, a little bit of an attractor, but the main idea is I want to stop my worm bait when I cast it blowing up the line. When a fish comes to hit it, I want it to hit the worm. I want it to be hitting the hook as well every time. So the sequin, I just thread the sequin on. Now, there are loads and loads of ways to do this. So, I, you know, I have used, you know, the little float stops you can get. You're just sliding them on. I've used those. Uh, but a nice easy way to do it is just to take a bit of silicon silicon tubing. This is just you know standard you know pole fishing or float tubing, and we'll just cut a little bit off. There we go. Cut a little bit off, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it, slide it on. Slide it down towards the towards the edge of the sequin. And then holding that in my hand, I'm going to take the end again. I'm just going to pass it back through, like so. And then just pull it tight. Forms like a little. You know, there's no knot in the line there. The knot is only in the tubing. Now, if you wet it, so as you can see, it's formed like it looks like a small little knot, but it's not a knot in the line. It's a lot, a, a small knot that's in the tubing. Now, if you wet it, you could slide it up, you could slide it down. It goes around freely. The idea of that is that it gives something to the sequin to butt up to. So as the sequin butts up to it, it's not moving. So you can now adjust it depending on the size of worm and baits that you've got. So I'm going to take this, my snood, I'm going to bring back my rig body. I'm going to take my bottom swivel. And I'm just going to tie that on, also using a grinner. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure you wet your knot. Put it down nice and tight. Nice and tight. Chop the tag end off. Same again. I just leave that little bit. So now that is now attached to the rig body. The next thing to do just to finish this off is to is to take your pair of pliers so take your pair pop your rig body down pop the snood down okay slide the bead and the crimp right up like so so that's where I that's where I want it to be I don't want it to be any lower than this which is you know about 12 inches away from the hook. So what I do now is I get my pliers, go up to the crimp, just give it a push and another little push. Not too much because you don't want to damage the actual the body. Then slide down your black, your other well, your other bead, and your other crimp. Now some people might put it like that, so it's touching. I like to just give it a little bit of separation on the pier. This then just allows for that movement because it's you know sometimes if you cast off a pier you can it could be dropping quite a lot. Okay, so we just pop the pliers in there, put the pliers in there, give it a little squeeze. That's it. Right now that's locked in position. So so now you've got your lead's going to be along here. 
and your snood is just just a little bit shorter this helps to prevent the snood from, from tangling around the lead so it's just crimping crimping and tying the snood on if you do exactly the same do exactly the same with the top one and obviously slide it down the important part with your top one or for some people it could even be the third one or, or or second is to make sure that your snood isn't going to touch your other snood the snoods can't touch there needs to be a you know enough you know at least an inch in separation between them in terms of the line to prevent this the tangling don't get me wrong you can have them really really long and they won't tangle but you've got more chance of it tangling if, if they're really long so that's how I tie my two hook flappers for a three hook flapper you would just do the same you know but you what I would do with the two hook flapper is I would probably make my snoods a lot shorter so that's why I like the three hook because I can fish with really long really long snoods um, which when you're fishing for cod is really good because they tend to be bottom feeders so that's how you make a two or three hook flapper and uh, thank you for watching NG Fishing uh, any questions please feel free to ask if not enjoy your fishing